So the Helling Aces is actually pretty easy to beat once you're familiar with what to do for each phase. And to start, your loadout will 100% need to be a homing weapon and roundabout. The hitboxes for each phase are just way too awkward to be using normal weapons for the entire fight, which is why a homing weapon will really do you justice here. And I'd heavily recommend using Crackshot, because it's surprisingly useful here. The versatility Crackshot offers you is just way too good to pass up for this fight, in my opinion. And Roundabout is surprisingly good as well, even though people may not think so. You'd think this fight screams Twist Up, but really Twist Up just sucks for this fight, I don't know how else to put it. Yes, Twist Up does work for some instances throughout the fight, but other than that, it's just way too inconsistent to be using throughout the entire fight. And trust me, throughout the rest of this video, you'll see why Roundabout and Crackshot are goaded for this fight. Anyways, for your charm, you should clearly be using Heart Ring here. The Howling Aces is definitely up there with Phantom Express with the insane amount of parries you can get throughout the entire fight. So trust me, Heart Ring is definitely the best charm to bring for this fight. And for your super, well, it really doesn't matter since I like to just spam EXs anyways. But if you want to use your super, just bring one that deals damage. Giant Ghost does seem like a viable option for this fight actually, so you can use that if you want, but other than that, I'd recommend just using EXs. So with all that, let's start with the first phase. So let's go over the gimmicks of the fight first. So what separates the Hallowing Aces from all the other boss fights is the way you fight the boss. That of course being, you standing on a plane that moves depending on what side of the plane you're on. And throughout the entire fight, this plane can be quite a nuisance. And I'm sad to say this, but you have to just get good at positioning yourself on the plane. That's what makes this fight surprisingly difficult. But once you get good at moving the plane where you need it to be, it really doesn't become that much harder than normal bosses. Nonetheless, this is definitely up to your skill to be able to manage this, and get your S rank of course. So, on top of you having to manage the plane, you also have to make sure you're hitting the boss, which is typically above you. This makes it pretty awkward to use normal weapons when he's constantly moving side to side. And on top of that, he'll jump out of his plane to perform an attack on either the left or right side of the screen. He will always alternate between these two attacks. For one of his attacks, he'll fly downwards with the cat in his hands, and he'll squeeze the cat and three yarn balls will shoot across the screen. All you have to do for this is simply duck under them. Just be careful of the tennis balls that fall from the plane, and other than that, this is pretty easy to dodge. For his second attack, he'll float down before shooting three pairs of spinning bones, each in different sections of the screen, as you can see. And one of the pairs of bones is guaranteed to be pink and parryable. However, if the first pair of bones is pink, then the third one should always be pink as well. And other than that, the bones will stop on the other side of the screen and then come back towards you, with the middle section of spinning bones coming at you first, and then the other pairs of bones will do the same. So if all three pairs of bones are going to come back towards you, just duck under the middle one, which will go out first like I said, and just jump over the bottom one once it comes towards you. So those are the two attacks the Bulldog can do, and he'll alternate between them every time he jumps off the plane. You'll still have to deal with the Yankee Yippers throwing tennis balls down, and you'll also have to deal with the Fire Hydrant that homes in on you. I personally like to use Crackshot to easily get rid of the Fire Hydrant, and just try to be aware of the tennis balls when they get thrown down. And just so you know, you can roughly tell when the Fire Hydrants are going to start attacking you. After the Bulldog has taken a certain amount of damage, the Dog Chinook will fly in the background and shoot Fire Hydrants in the sky. Roughly 5 seconds after the Dog Chinook is off the screen is when the Fire Hydrants will start coming towards you. And that's pretty much all there is for the first phase, so let's move on to the second phase. For this phase, you're going to have to deal with the 4 Yankee Yippers that were on the plane before in the first phase but this time, they'll revolve around the screen and bark out letters towards the player. Luckily, these guys have barely any HP, 68 HP to be exact according to the wiki. And because of that, you can literally eliminate one of these guys at the very beginning of this phase. You can shoot roundabout shots before this phase officially begins, and all those shots will hit one of the pups, and then of course just turn towards that pup, keep on shooting, and it should literally go down at the very beginning once they start moving. From there on out, just try to make sure you're hitting your shots, but because the time requirement isn't an issue for this fight at all, I like to take my time and try to deal as much damage as I can when I can. Which means, don't be stressed if you aren't taking out the pups in like 2 seconds dude, it's really not that big of a deal. And although Crackshot isn't exactly the most useful weapon for this phase, it definitely can work for this phase if you aim it right. If you try to aim ahead of the pup that you want to actually take out, it typically works pretty well, or well enough that is. 
And for a roundabout, I try to typically aim at the pups directly, or I'm going to aim in the areas that they're going to pass by. That way, I'll be able to get consistent damage throughout the phase, and soon enough you'll get over the phase pretty easily. And of course, it does help to move the plane closer to the pups so you can deal more damage faster. Also, jumping when the pups are above you can achieve the same result. And lastly, I assume you guys know this already, but when their jetpacks start to emit grey smoke is when they're about to be eliminated, so try to take them out sooner than later. So with the second phase pretty much over with, let's move on to the last phase. For the final phase, the Dog Chinook will fly in the background towards the middle and then grab both sides of the screen. After that, laser rays will randomly pop out of the paw pads on each paw. And after a short telegraphed cue of where the rays' lasers will land, the rays will then shoot out their lasers. Sometimes, a pair of rays will pop out of the bottom paw pads on each paw and shoot a pink laser across the screen. This, of course, can be parried. After this ray attack occurs three times, the Dog Chinook will flip the entire screen counterclockwise in which we'll have to deal with Sergeant Ophara summoning dog bulls that go across the screen. The color of the dog bull determines what area of the screen the dog bull will stop and proceed to fly off the screen. The yellow dog bulls will stop a bit above the player's head and fly off the screen, and the red bulls will stop on the standing ground of the plane and fly off the screen. Therefore, to easily dodge this attack, just jump over the red bulls and make sure a yellow bull is not above you when you're jumping. That's literally it. This section of the final phase is one of your only opportunities to get the most out of your EX and Super, so it's either now or never. After this section with Sergeant Ophara, the screen will turn counterclockwise again and you'll revert back to the Ray section. And this basically rinse and repeats until you finally beat the boss. Anything else I didn't say directly or was missed was clearly shown with the gameplay in the background, so with that, that's how you easily S rank the Howling Aces. Thank you all for watching. If you made it this far and enjoyed the video, please consider liking, subscribing, and sharing the video to help out the channel. And with that, I'll see you all in the next video.